But once again, we're back at Antiques Power Line. We are. Because this week we're going to be looking at something really cool that they've built there. It is. A bunch of guys screwing around, of mm -hmm. course. But what they've done is they've gotten a hold of an old sawmill because, you know, it's the Pacific Northwest. Right. That's what they had up in the Pacific Northwest was a lot of steam-powered sawmills, that sort of thing. So these guys got all the bits and pieces of one and put one together. Oh, my. And then they just screw around with it. They're not looking to sell any lumber, but at the end of the day, boy, do they produce some lumber. I would imagine. But it'd be fun to get some. It would be fun to have some, some wood sawn on the old steam-powered sawmill this mm, way. Smooth it out, make a coffee smooth table. It out. Yeah, it's rough sawn. They don't have a planer or anything like that. But it's neat. It's neat. Check this out. <laughs> the steam-powered sawmill at Antiques Power Land in Oregon. Antiques Powerland is actually a collection of smaller museums. In this case, this is a sawmill that some guys have built. <laughs> That's really cool. That's neat. What an interesting hobby. What do you got? We have a sawmill that we screw around with. At any rate, it's kind of a 19th century, early 20th century steam operated sawmill. And periodically they fire it up just to educate the public. And boy, is it noisy. This is the monster in the room, the Ripsaw. It has about a four foot diameter blade on it. And it's powered by the biggest steam engine in the room as well. Because this thing has to be able to cut the logs into strips. All of the individual saws have their own steam engines to drive them. Unlike facilities where everything is driven by one engine and then belts, Every one of these saws has its own smaller steam engine. And other small engines can be used for generating electricity or air compression or any of those kinds of things. A lot of these engines are running all the time. Yeah, I guess those are the ones generating electricity or whatever. But when they're ready to cut wood, then they'll fire up all of the other engines, starting with the monster that runs the rip saw. Look at the size of that boiler. Wow, talk about a locomotive. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. All of the smaller engines are being driven by this one huge, huge boiler, and it runs entirely on scrap wood. They generate so much scrap wood that, well, they just feed it to the boiler. So the first cut through the log here is just taking a few inches off the side and once they have a flat side here they'll rotate the log onto that flat side where it's much more stable. Now a few of these guys have the job of just keeping the steam engines running. That's a full-time job for several people running around and oiling and so on. The hardest job appears to be running the cutoff saw. Boy, I'll tell you, talk about teamwork. Geez, they have to be able to rotate that massive heavy log just in order to run this saw. So you have to put the Armstrong guys on the rip saw. The thickness of the cut is being controlled here with this handle that moves the whole trolley over and sets the, the depth of the cut.
So they've got the cut depth set here to two inches. What they're actually making are two by fours, which are actually being cut to two by four inches. Of course, by the time you buy them at Home Depot, they've been run through a thickness planer and they're down to one and a half by three and a half inches. I always kind of wondered why two by fours weren't actually two by four. <laughs> but uh, just one of those peculiarities that the rough cut wood is in fact two by four. Once the entire log has been cut up, then those lengths of wood are sent back through the rip saw to cut them down to width. In this case, four inches. So they're coming out of here now as actual two by fours. So what we have here is a bunch of guys screwing around. <laughs> it would be really fun to time travel back to about, what, 1880? Yeah. And and uh, explain to those guys working in a lumber mill that in the 21st century, guys would do what they're doing just for the sheer fun of doing it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> They'd think you were nuts. Absolutely. So this rather large steam engine here runs the main cutoff saw. And a lot of times the main cutoff saw is being used to cut the scrap lumber down into more manageable sizes so they can feed it to the boiler. But they're generating scrap wood so fast that they were loading it into bins and onto pallets and then hauling it all around the facility and giving it away to the guys with the steam tractors. And at the end of the day, they, there was wood all over the place. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> <laughs> even, even with the tractors and everything, they couldn't burn it up as fast as they were generating it. I think it's really interesting to note that this entire facility runs on wood and water. That's neat. <laughs> it's neat that they, they just bring in logs. That is the fuel and the end product. And then they boil water in the boiler. And that's uh, the electricity. Everything here is all made out of wood and water. It's really amazing, though, how fast this thing turns logs into wood. Uh, they should have hung up like a Home Depot sign out in the parking lot because <laughs> they, they've just got so much lumber. I was wishing we had a truck because here's our fence for Garage Mahal just sitting here in their lumber yard. And it just, just came from screwing around. Well, that is the neatest sawmill. Isn't that? And it smells good. Oh, I know. The smell reminds me of my dad because he worked with wood his whole life. Well, just that, that smell of 
sawn wood, and in this case mixed with burning wood and injector oil and steam and yes. all these things that are going on there all at the same time. And mm -hmm. It was just a sensory overload in terms oh, of the smell of the whole place. Yes. Then there was the sensory overload in our ears. Oh, I had my earplugs. I start carrying earplugs in my purse because when we go to railroad yards, and sometimes that train whistle kind of hurts my oh, ears. I, I tell so, you, 844, I think, you know, can deafen you if oh, you're not expecting it. So I just hear loud bang noise. So I just get where I carry yeah. my earplugs. Just we we'll put it, we put in our earplugs whenever we uh -huh. go into these noisy environments. Right. So thank goodness for that. And I noticed the whole crew yes. was wearing ear protection. Yes. So you might you might want to think about yeah. that when Doesn't you go off much. on some of the yeah, just yeah. little you know just little foam plugs, plugs from the pharmacy yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah, or Home Depot. I get Home right Depot. at Home Depot. They're yeah, they're easy. Yep, they're, they're good ones. Well, anyway, if, if you haven't been over to the channel, do pop on over to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe mm -hmm. because it helps us out. We can prove to Google and Yahoo and anybody that's interested that we're, <laughs> we actually have people interested in, in the show because yes. they're subscribing. Yes. And the real easy way to subscribe is to click on the infamous blue button. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for it? Zoink! Right there, round blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Tuesday with a collector's ad. We'll see you then. See you. Bye. Bye. -bye.